Good morning, Branson, Missouri. Coming to you live and in color. <laughs> Do we have any visitors or guests? Raise your hand. Ginger has something for you. You really will like it too. So a visitor or a guest or you're just so hungry, raise your hand. We have something for you. While she's doing that, you'll notice in your bulletin that there is this page called for members and guests. If you'd be so kind to fill that out, drop it off into the offering plate, it helps our secretary keep our records up to date. And at this time, Judy has an announcement. I wasn't going to have any announcements and surprise you, but they said I have to tell you about this real quick. First of all, uh, we have two visitors here, Sue and David. They're the ones I told you. They were here in July. They're from, we met them through our thrift store, and they've been to our church. They've been really part of it while we were here, and they're back this morning. They, they emailed me and told me, welcome. The church is so happy. to The Lord's happy to have you here. Okay, my uh, announcement is I need to tell you something has transpired a little bit differently with the thrift store. Down by the fellowship, there's a, you'll see it, there's a, um, a door, and it, there's a sign above it that says um, thrift store do, do, donations. So rather, we're only open on the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and some of you, we're more than willing to come out and help out before that. But if you have something you want as a parishioner to donate, just uh, put it in that room, and we will take care of it from there. I hope I was thinking a lot about things this morning, and I thought about the innkeeper that said there's no room in the inn. I hope that we don't feel that way as Christians. There should be always room in our hearts for our Lord, and hopefully that light of him is shining through us. Thank you. Good morning. Our church here had the outreach of uh, serving the people cookies and hot, and, uh, hot chocolate when you had your adoration parade. Harold and I had the opportunity to help um, the Methodist church when they showed the viewing of the Polar Express to families in the community. The families came, they brought their blankets, laid them on the floor. We found chairs for adults. We served them hot chocolate and hot cocoa, and hot cider, which the adults enjoyed, uh, cookies and popcorn. But I had two little boys that really enjoyed the hot chocolate and they kept coming back and one time when they came they said do you have enough hot chocolate for adults and I said yes did you want to take some to your mommy he said yes please so we shared just God's love with the families they were met at the door by Santa and Mrs. Santa, but the love that was shown to them, like there is at the Adoration Parade and showing our community 
how much we all want to love everybody at Christmas time. But it was the first time that Harold and I ever went to church in our pajamas. <laughs> our scripture this morning is Luke. It's Luke 1, 39 to 45. And this is the scripture where Mary rushes to the city of Judea and wants to visit Zacharias and Elizabeth. And when she is on her way, Elizabeth greets her and says, Oh, you, the, the baby in my womb, jumped for joy when he heard your voice. You have been given the, the blessing to be the mother of our Holy Father. And how blessed I am to have you come in my home. That is Laura's version of the scripture, but it's the scripture that means something to me. Could we all join in the call to worship, please? Oh, let our souls magnify the Lord. Spirits rejoice in God, our Savior. The Mighty One has done great things for us. Holy is God's name. May we all join in singing, O Come, All You Faithful.
I would like to also read the scripture from Luke 1, 39 to 45. In a few days later, Mary hurried to the highlands of Judea to the town where Zacharias lived to visit Elizabeth. At the sound of Mary's greetings, Elizabeth's child leaped with her, and she was filled with the Holy Spirit. She gave a glad cry and exclaimed to Mary, You are favored by God above all other women, and your child is destined for God's mighty praise. What an honor this is that the mother of my Lord should visit me. When you came in and greeted me, the instant I heard your voice, my baby moved in me for joy. You believed that God would do what he said. That is why he has given you this wonderful blessing. And now we will have the Advent. This is the season of Advent the time we get ready to celebrate the mystery of Christmas, the time we are all on our way to Bethlehem. But who will show us the way? The prophets. Prophets listen to God so they can show us the way. Isaiah was a prophet who listened and spoke the word of God. He said one day the Messiah would be born. The Messiah would be like a light shining in the darkness. This is what Isaiah said. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. This is the candle of the prophets. It reminds us that the prophets, like Isaiah, listen to God so they can show us the way to Bethlehem. Let us enjoy the light of the prophets. Mary and Joseph are on their way to Bethlehem. They can show us the way. They have a secret. An angel came to them and said, Do not be afraid. Be joyful. You will have the God's special son. You will name him Jesus. Here is Mary, Joseph, and the donkey who are on their way to Bethlehem where Jesus will be born. Here is the candle of the Holy Family. It reminds us not to be afraid, but to be joyful on the way to Bethlehem. Let us enjoy the light of the Holy Family. The shepherds are on their way to Bethlehem. They can show us the way. They have good news too. An angel came to them and said, do not be afraid. Be joyful. Today, a savior, God's special son is born in Bethlehem. You will find him lying in a manger. Here are the shepherds and their sheep who are on the way to Bethlehem to see the special child who was born. This is the candle of the shepherds. It reminds us of the good news. A savior, a special son of God is born. Let us enjoy the light of the shepherds. The Magi are on their way to Bethlehem. They could show us the way. 
The Magi saw a special star in the sky for a king. They followed the star to Bethlehem, bringing gifts for the newborn king, gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Here are the Magi and their camel. This is the candle of the Magi. It reminds us of the gifts of God's gift of Christ, the newborn king. Thank you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, once again, we come before your throne on this beautiful Sunday morning. Father, we thank you for the birth of your son, Jesus Christ, who's come into the world to give us hope, to give us life. But during this season, Lord, we also are reminded of those who have lost loved ones, those who, for Christmas, means a period of sadness in their life. And for those, we pray that you will touch their lives, Father. Let them know that one day they will see their loved ones in Christ again. But for us, let us rejoice. No matter how we find ourselves, no matter what kind of situation we find ourselves in, we know that you are with us. We can feel your presence. And we thank you so much, Lord, this morning for those who have participated in this worship service that we may honor you, our God, our Father. We honor you through words, through song, through prayers. We give you our hearts. We give you what we have. And we thank you for that. In this day, Father, all we ask is that you will bless us, show us the way, help us to live the life you want for us, help us to always know, no matter what the danger, no matter what the happiness, that you are with us. And let us not forget the beauty of the world you've created. Sometimes we get so busy, we we fail to see the wonderful and beautiful things in life. Help us to see other people as, as your sons and daughters. Help us to show kindness to everyone that we meet. And let them know that we are your ambassadors here on earth. And let us let the word go forth, the words of love and joy. And hope. And now, Father, out of respect for you, we now pray the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
the mother of our Lord, Mary, lived to see her son captured and killed. And she saw him rise from the dead. She saw the words of her song fulfilled for God, has shown strength wide his arm and lifted up the lowly. We gather at Jesus' table now with his disciples in all times and places. Mary, first among them, to celebrate that in him we are set free from oppression. Please join us in singing the hymn, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, rising on the second verse. The Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Eat this as often as you do in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Drink this as often as you do in remembrance of me. And now hear the prayers of the elders. Dear Heavenly Father, as we enter your presence during this holy Advent season, we fully understand that the gift you bring is everlasting life. You came as a baby, you lived your life as a servant, and your body was broken at Calvary for the sins of all mankind. We break this bread among us now, and we shall never forget what occurred that day at Calvary. And now the prayer continues. Father, we come before you today with joy unspeakable and full of glory. And that glory was made manifest when your precious son bowed his head at Calvary and he shed his life's blood that we might live. We do this today in unity and according to your instructions. Amen.
During this season, we have focused on giving gifts to those whom we love. During this time of offering, we have a chance to reflect on the gift that God has given to us. Jesus Christ, our Lord, God's Son. And as we do that, let us consider what we might give back to Christ, to God, in thankfulness for what God has already given to us. Please join together singing. No, excuse me. May we collect the tithe. As we come closer to the day of celebration of Jesus' birth, O oh God, we wonder at the gifts we gave in him, the gifts of love. He gave us love and grace and life, knowing that we could never repay you for these gifts. Still, we want to give you something in return to show our love and our gratitude. Accept these offerings as the tokens of our love for you and for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Thank you, Laura, for doing a great job this morning as worship leader. It's been several years since we've done the cantata in continuous. Uh, a lot of times we just put it in between the various elements of the service. But today we're going to do it uninterrupted. And we have a pair of narrators. Happy to welcome Maxine Church and uh, Russ, who is always so solid doing this. So between the two of them, we hope this is going to be a, a wonderful presentation. It's uh, Tapestry of Light by Joseph M. Martin. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough places smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles.
Hear this promise from Scripture. The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. And all will see the glory of the Lord and the splendor of our God. Hear the words of the prophet. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Now hear the words from the Gospel of Luke. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Thank you. 
Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to all people on whom his favor rests.
shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and the kings to the brightness of your dawn. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and we have come to worship him.
You are the light of the world. A town built upon a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Then Jesus spoke to the people. He said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all people. Let us therefore rejoice, for God through Christ has made us his children of light. We are now a reflection of his glory. As we forsake the darkness of this world, we freely choose the illumination of God's truth and grace. Let us now shine our light before all people, so that by the light of our love they may see the glory of God in all we say and do. Rejoice, 
I think you have passed the audition. <laughs> well, I kept counting. There's only seven of you. And there was, and it sounded like quite a few. You know, I think we better give my hand again. Good job. It's time. With our invitation, and may we stand and sing the invitation from God. Standing, please.
And now may God bless each and every one of you. May God continue to watch over you, keep you safe. And may we rejoice in the gift of God. Amen. 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 And we'd like to invite everyone for a very hot and glorious meal downstairs after following this. And, okay, come and see here, Betta. Stu O'Connell.